Okay, everybody, here we go again, uh, picking up with the symmetrical, asymmetrical, and overturned folds. Again, it all has to do with the nature of the dip of the limbs on either side of the hinge line, the crest area, uh, you know, basically even on symmetrical anticlines, uh, significantly different. We have a shallow and a steeper one on an asymmetric. And on an overturn system, you know, here you won't really want to think about the axial plane, which is coming up to here. You know, that thing is almost horizontal. This thing has been overturned and deformed that much. And here is an example of what these things might look like in real life. Here's something that's at least close to a symmetrical fold coming up through this area. This is an asymmetrical fold. This limb is not as steeply dipped as this limb over here. Okay, and then going back over here again, coming through this area. And then this one is an overturn fold. You can actually see where this thing comes up, turning right around again. And think of, you know, this is the axial plane coming through here. Here's the axial plane coming down through here. The axial plane coming down through this one. Well, this one is almost horizontal, okay, as is being demonstrated by this model here in this, this image. Okay, so your symmetrical asymmetrical and we're out here there we go uh, overturn folds all right moving right along two special type of folded feet uh, structures and this gets that back to you know the, the hill type structures versus the valley type structures if you will excuse me and a circular hill type structure is referred to as a dome in this case I don't know if you can Point, uh, see it in here, but you have all these little strike and dip symbols, and they're basically pointing away from, at least the dips are, the center of your your domal feature. So if this thing hadn't been eroded away, the dome would come up over like this. Okay, your oldest rocks would be here in the middle, your younger rocks are out here at the edges, and the dips are all out away from the center. Okay, in the case of the uh, kind of circular valley if you will it's a what's referred to as a basin uh, just the opposite's going on here the youngest strata youngest rock units are in the middle the oldest rock units are around the edge and you'll notice that here everything is dipping inwards okay so all the dips are coming in here they were all going out away from the center okay so the difference between a dome and a bed these are another type of feature, geological feature, structure that's being formed or can be formed by plastic deformation. Okay, in this instance we're now going to look at faults and this is what happens when you get brittle deformation. Okay, and this geologist is out here in the field looking at this fault unit that comes down through here. Okay, you can see the arrows that are you know depicting the relative uh, directions of movement you also get a sense here of, well, if you look closely, you get these darker beds here, coincide with these darker beds up here. These thinner darker beds here coincide with these ones down here. This light bed here with this light one here. You know, you can start to put this whole thing back together again and think about sliding this fault, well, if we could do it, slide the fault back into place, okay? So we're able to actually not only tell something about the direction of movement, we can determine its strike and its dip and all of that, we can also get a relative sense of how much this system has moved, how much we've displaced these rock units, you know, from here going up to here during this faulting event. Now, in classifying faulted systems, uh, we use some special terminology that comes out of basically the mining business. And here we see this little miner in a tunnel. And if you think about, you know, above him he has rocks that are hanging over his head, and below him he have rocks that are under his feet. You know, this can be used for any linear feature that cuts through a rock unit. When miners do it, they're looking for ore veins, but it can also be relative to what? A fault system because that ore vein might actually be uh, have been deposited along an old fault system. Okay, so hanging wall sitting up above, foot wall sitting down below, and depending on the nature of the stresses that are being applied, whether things are being pulled apart, you know, tensional stress, you're extending the system, that'll give one type of movement along this this uh, 
ball system. If you're compressing things together, that gives an entirely different uh, type of movement along that fault system. So in classifying folds, uh, excuse me, faults, um, when we have an extensional setting, in other words, where we're pulling things apart, where that stress is tensional, okay, and you're going to, again, want to stretch the area and cause the rock system to break along a fault, the hanging wall is going to go down relative to the foot wall. Okay, so as you watch, well, think about what's going on here in the sequence of block diagrams, when we start to stretch this block of rock, the, the fault ultimately forms, and when it starts to move, this thing is just going to start sliding down into the subsurface, creating you know this little valley out here and this possible mountain range up here um, adjacent to it. Okay, as as that system evolves, and that's actually a prominent type of faulting that exists out in the Basin and Range province that is out in, uh, well, from central Utah basically into eastern California, where that area has been extended for a large period of time and there's a lot of normal faulting. Now, what happens when you have compression occurring? Well, then you have something that's referred to as reverse faulting, and in reverse faulting, the hanging wall, you're compressing things together, is going to move up relative to the foot wall. So unlike the normal fault where the hanging wall went down, in this case the hanging wall is going up. When that happens along a high angle fault, you have a what's referred to as just a reverse fault. Okay? And this again is what happens when you get compression happening in an area. When you have low angle faults, they can actually turn something in to what's referred to as a thrust fault, and when thrust faulting continues over great distances, it becomes what's referred to as an overthrust. And this actually was prevalent in deformation that was occurring in the western U.S. about 90 million years ago, particularly up through parts of Wyoming and Montana, and what's referred to as the overthrust belt. Okay? And in that case, you're actually thrusting rocks that used to be at greater depths up onto the surface. And in some cases, you're putting significantly older rocks like here. Precambrian rocks are greater than 550, you know, 570 million years old above Cretaceous rocks that might be as young as 100 million years old. Okay, So significant things happening in there. Again, compression's happening. The, the forces, the stress is coming this way and this way. But there's a low angle uh, fault that's developed and when that movement happens over broad areas that low angle reverse fault, something called a thrust fault, becomes what's referred to as an overthrust. When you get lateral move, whoops, I missed something. I did. I forgot something. Okay, the one case I'm not showing you here is what happens when you get side by side movement or lateral movement on a fault system such as you get along like the San Andreas Fault, where you've got one plate sliding beside an, uh, an adjacent plate. Okay, That happens when you have shearing stress, side-by-side -side differential stress, and you have that lateral movement along that system. So another thing to keep in mind. Okay, That transform fault, if you will, would be one place where that happens. And then the last type of deformation I want to actually talk about in this little presentation is something called jointing. And jointing is something, again, where you have you know, some sort of vertical separation or horizontal separation in the rock system, but there isn't any movement. Okay? But there are discrete planes where the system starts to open up. On the left-hand side of the slide, you are looking at what's referred to as Devil's Tower up in northeastern Wyoming. And this is believed to be an old volcanic plug where the magma came up into the system, got stuck in the throat of something. As that magma cooled, um, the rock system is actually going to uh, uh, shrink. And when it does so, it would actually open up these joints between them. Uh, other rock units like sandstones and granites are also present are prevalent to creating these joint systems either when they cool or something else happens in these systems. The difference with a joint is it does not move along that system. Okay, that's going to wrap up this presentation. I'm back to 10 minutes again, so I want to get this thing onto YouTube. Be talking to you again soon.